morning or afternoon or evening uh, whenever you're watching this. Hope you're having a good week. Those of you who have seen a number of these reflections will know that I've enjoyed finding out about the saints and great Christians being celebrated in the Church of England calendar on a particular day. Now, most of these have been inspiring and an encouragement to me for my own Christian pilgrimage and a hope for yours. Every now and then, however, I've come across some I'm not sure about. Oh, great faithful Christians, yes, but they don't really encourage me. They're sometimes a bit too saintly, too different, and I've felt I'll never be like that, or even I don't think I want to be like that. And the person we're invited to commemorate today is one such. He's called Alan Gardiner. It's spelled A-L-L-E-N, Allen and Gardiner. And he was an Anglican missionary in the middle of the 19th century. Now, as usual, I've enjoyed finding out more about, about him, but he was, dare I say, an odd, rather challenging man. He was born in Berkshire in 1794. His parents were devout Christians, and he himself was a very pious boy. He insisted on sleeping on the floor while his brothers had their comfortable beds so that he might experience the hardships of Christ. It's not the normal behaviour of a ten-year-old lad. But in his teens he joined the Navy and he totally lost his Christian faith. He was promoted to commander and travelled the world. And on one of these trips he had a spiritual crisis and he totally rediscovered his faith. You see, he was a man of extremes. And from then on, he had a strong desire to convert everyone he met, first in Southern Africa and then in Latin America. He gave up the Navy and he made epic journeys, especially across Bolivia and Argentina and China, often with his wife and children, enduring great hardship and a lot of opposition from local people, also from the official missionary societies of the day, who weren't too happy with his rather aggressive style. His last trip was to Patagonia, and it was there that he died of hunger, cold and disease in 1851. His diary was discovered later by his body and is a moving account of his last days. It includes this prayer. Lord, let not this mission fail. If we should languish and die here, I beseech thee to raise up others and send further labourers into the vineyard. As I said, he, he wasn't an easy man and it could be said that he wasn't a very successful missionary in his lifetime. Somehow, however, he has become respected for his sheer courage, his commitment to the faith and his passion to share it with others. And partly inspired by his death, the South American Missionary Society was founded and its work, now within the Anglican Church Mission Society, is very much alive today. God answered his prayer. Although he, Alan Gardner, languished and died, others were raised up to continue his work. And his life has made me think about people who have fought the good fight. Maybe not people who I warm to. Maybe they didn't achieve much success in their lifetime, but they opened the way to others. The writer of the letter to the Hebrews knew this, and in chapter 11 he gives us a long list of people of faith, including some who suffered and died for it. It's an odd list in some ways. Okay, Moses, Noah and Abraham are on it, but he also includes Rahab the prostitute, Abel, Barak, Jephthah and lots of others unnamed who lived and died for their faith. And then at the beginning of the next chapter, chapter 12, he uses some memorable words to sum up everything he has been describing in chapter 11. Helen is going to read Hebrews 12, 1 to 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. 
let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. A great cloud of witnesses surrounds us. A wonderful phrase, and how true that is. These witnesses were not all easy personalities. We probably wouldn't get on with some of them, like Alan Gardner. But they kept the faith, and at great personal cost, they paved the way for others to do great things. So I invite you to join me in giving thanks that over history and today the church has been and is blessed with odd personalities and that we, maybe a bit odd ourselves, continue their work. And I close with a prayer for missionaries written by one who was retiring after serving 40 years. It's also a prayer for ourselves as we try to serve Jesus in any ways we can. So let us pray. Gracious God, protect your workers. Shield them, shield us from danger, disease, deceit, diversions and denial. Give them, give us, determination to glorify you, whatever the cost. Amen.